Hello, this is Nick Dolman, and I want to welcome you to Secrets of the Dataverse. In today's episode, we will search for the mysterious report wizard. If you are new to creating Power Apps on Dataverse, you may think the only reporting option is Power BI. While Power BI is a powerful reporting option, did you know that you can create SQL Server Reporting Services reports? And if you find that a bit intimidating, buried deep in Dataverse is the report wizard that was introduced over a decade ago in the early days of dynamic CRM. Today, it is still an easy way to quickly create an ad hoc report in Dataverse. So I'm in the new solution explorer. I'm going to add a new asset to my solution. And here I'm going to choose a new report. Now this is going to launch the new report screen, which is still using the classic interface. This is where if you've created an SSRS report in Visual Studio, you're able to upload that. However, today we're going to take a look at the report wizard. Now, if you're new to Dataverse, you may never have seen this before, but if you've worked with Dynamic CRM in the past, you may be somewhat familiar with it as this has been a feature in Dynamic CRM for a long time, but it is also available for just regular power apps within Dataverse. So I'm just going to build a report for the sample app that comes with Dataverse if you decide to deploy the sample apps, the innovation challenge. And here we're going to create a report about the challenges and ideas just to see if we can be able to get a listing of those ideas, but also a sum of the total investment required. So this is something that we can't really do in a view in Dataverse, or we'd have to create another report or export to Excel or, of course, use Power BI. So once I've given my report a name and a bit of a description, the next thing I need to do is pick the particular Dataverse tables of which this report's going to be based on. And the report wizard allows us to choose two tables. So I'm first going to choose the primary record type, and this is going to be the challenges table. That's part of that sample innovation challenge app. And then the other table that I'm going to choose is the ideas table. So first we pick challenges. And now the related record type has to have that one to many relationship. So I've chosen ideas. And we now have picked our tables. Let's continue on. So the next step in the wizard, we can choose existing views to establish our filtering. Of course, we can add additional filters. So again, for each table, again, we have the challenges and ideas. I'm just going to choose the active records for now. But we'll take a look in a few minutes of how we can add additional filtering even after the report has been run. So now that we have our data, now the next thing we need to do is add like grouping and columns. Now this is something we can't do in a view. So this is where the report wizard is kind of handy. I'm just going to group it by the challenges and then I can add multiple layering of groups. And now in the actual columns of the report, I'm just going to choose idea. Let's uh, just kick the name. And again, we can adjust the width to a certain point. Again, just going to put in the description to have this. And then finally, we're going to add the investment required. And this is where the report wizard does give us a few more options than just a regular view. So I'm going to choose that investment required column. And now in the summary type, I, instead of none, I'm going to allow it to choose the sum. So we're going to get a sum in the bottom of each particular group in our report. Now the report wizard has another feature where we can add some charts. And again, this isn't going to give you the same level of charting as Power BI, but it does give you the basics. And that might just be enough if you need to generate a report for your boss in a, in a hurry, basically. Here, I'm just going to choose a vertical bar chart, but we have other options as well. And now I'm just going to put in the details for that particular chart. So let's just change the label around. So we're going to be breaking that out by challenges. And then we're going to, for our Y axis, it's going to be the investment required. I can make a few other adjustments here. And again, this isn't meant to be fine tuning. This is meant to be able to quickly create a report. And then just a few minutes later, our report is successfully created and we can just finish that. And then from here, uh, the other thing we can do is we can make sure this report shows up in a model driven app. And, this is where we would put in the related record types and whether we're displaying that in forms or lists. That's something we're going to explore in a few minutes. Let's just run the report and see what it looks like. 
So a report is now generated. It's probably not the most prettiest thing in the world, but it is very functional. We do have that bar chart there. We have some other options. We can dump this out to a variety of file formats if we so desired. We also have the ability to print, and I know that uh, something we might not be always doing a lot of, but be able to print. And now we can see the summary of the data. And then also notice that we see the sum of the investment required by each particular grouping by those challenges. And this is, again, a great way to create a summary report pretty quickly. And if we want, we can begin to edit the filter and fill in some other values. So here I'm just going to make sure that those challenges have ideas that have an investment that's greater than zero. And this is something that we can kind of do on the fly too. If anybody's running this report, they can edit the filter. And now we see the charts uh, a little bit more quick uh, summarized. We have a smaller report. It's only showing the data that's relevant. So again, pretty powerful features for something that's just meant to be very quick and simple. So here I've launched the innovation challenge that sample model driven power app. And in the, every menu, we have a run report and we see now that challenges report. Again, I can pick the particular records using pre filtering and that's a topic for another day. And from here, I can run the report directly from within my model driven app. I can view the chart. I can view the summary information. And of course, I could go in and edit that filter and begin to filter down the data. Now, I know some of you aren't too big on model-driven apps, so let's take a look to see how we can do this in a Canvas app. So here I'm going to create a brand new Canvas app as part of my solution. And from that Canvas app, we're going to be able to launch our report wizard report. So here I'm beginning to build my Canvas app. I'm going to create an app that's going to be able to run all the report wizard reports that I have in Dataverse. But you can modify this for your own Canvas app for your own purposes pretty easily, I think. I'm going to choose a data source. I'm going to find the system table reports that exist in Dataverse. And this table has a listing of all the reports that you would create using the report wizard. All right, so let's add a gallery to my uh, screen here. I'm just going to choose the gallery let that attach itself onto the screen and then i'm going to choose the report data source that report table as the data source of the gallery so we see now that the items are just the reports and we see a listing of the reports that exist out of the box as well as the custom ones that we may have created um, i'm just going to dress this app up a little bit um, just by putting a header at the very top and then we're going to go on to configure it to be able to run the reports so I've cleaned up this Canvas app a little bit. Now I'm going to change in the gallery instead of modified on. Let's show the description of the report. So our users are going to have a little bit more context of the report they're going to run. So we have that in there. And now what I'm going to do is we're going to launch the report viewer directly from the arrow to the right. That's part of the gallery to launch that report. So here's the formula that I'm adding. I'm using the launch command and I'm launching the URL. It is going to be the Dataverse URL slash CRM report slash viewer slash viewer dot ASPX. It's going to be looking for the GUID of the report. I'm be able to retrieve that from my gallery. And optionally, I could also put the file name in there as well, though I found that I don't really need it. And then of course, we're having following it with an action to run that particular report. So that's the command. You can extract that from running the report wizard report when you're designing it. So I've added that formula onto the on select for the particular arrow there. So this will launch that report wizard report directly from the Canvas app. So we run our Canvas app and we can choose our report. I'm just going to click on that challenges idea and summary. And after a few seconds, it will launch and run the report that we created using the report wizard. So in quick summary, there are still a lot of old features from dynamic CRM that are part of Dataverse that are still very useful for doing things very quickly. And the report wizard is one of them. I hope you found this video very helpful. Um, please, you know, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And also check out some of our other courses on 365.training.